um, hello this is the introduction video to the new project I'm gonna start and this project is called Loki um, but what is Loki so Loki is going to be a new experimental programming language that I'm gonna build to um, learn more about compilers and also um, test some ideas about the language design uh, first of all let me tell you Loki is not going to be a you know serious programming language that I will um, ten tell everyone to just just come use this There's, it's not going to be that it's just going to be a um, experimental project for me so I'm gonna take in a heavy inspiration from Go and Zig these two especially the parts about simplicity error handling and other things that we will see in the spec when I go through spec and also um, and also um, I'm gonna um, also test and experiment about the different ways you can basically generate native code that we will talk about in this video so um, Loki compiler is going to have this mm, kind of flow so we are going to have a tokenizer we are, which will uh, uh, generate a token stream. We are going to have then the parser which produces the AST for us, the abstract syntax tree. And we are going to do some semantic analysis on the AST and if it, everything is okay, the semantic analyzer is going to generate the IR for us. So IR is we are going to um, create our own IR, it's going to also be experimental, but um, after, after the semantic analyzer and then we are going to do the semantic analysis on the IR again and these semantic analysis are for both validating a program uh, especially the parts about types and um, you know the pro uh, the programs uh, the program gives uh, um, has meaning and uh, is correct at least in the sense of syntax and types after the semantic analysis uh, analysis again we are going to pass the Loki IR into a native code generator. So this is the part which actually uh, made me to call it Loki. So as you know, Loki was god of mischief. He could change his um, uh, his shape. This is the same thing with Loki, the language. So language Loki has this. Um, so these parts are going to probably just be written once from tokenized to last um, semantic anal analysis but the target code generator is going to be it is going to have multiple versions so there there is going to be a target code generator that will emit c code and it's most like a transpiler not necessarily a compiler that generates native code and then compile that c code using zig build, build system and generate native code that's one well, that's one of the backends or code generate target code generators. The other one is going to be for Go, so the target code generator that generates GoLang code, and then we'll compile that. And finally, if we are successful in building these, all of these, the next step for us is going to build a target code generator that emits. LLVM IR and then after that we will compile down the LLVM IR into native code So why, why I have this idea of having multiple target code generators so This idea comes from the 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 the, the notion that uh, they did the the, um, the idea I always had about uh, program languages Programming languages nowadays are completely um, isolated in their own ecosystem. So it's really hard to, for example, call calling call a function from, for example, um, let's say Go, um, call a function that is defined in Go code from, for example, Java. It's really hard to call a function that is called that is defined in Java from C sharp. And why is that? Because each programming language has its own host, has its own garbage collector, has its own environment and runtime. So my idea for Loki is to be able to compile itself 
to any host that makes sense. So if you want to write a web application program, a web server or a networking application that you need to heavily rely on concurrency, Go is probably one of the best things out there for this kind of uh, for this kind of uh, usage and use case. So we are going to emit Go code for you, and uh, oh, you can define it. You can you can specify the target code generator that you want to use, but also um, we are going to you know um, give you suggestions. So for example, if you use the concurrency features inside Loki, which are for now just going to be available in the Go backend, we are going to just compile it for you in uh, and generate a Go uh, generate Go binary basically for you. If you want to write an embedded application, you don't want a runtime, you don't want um, a garbage collector. We are going to generate C code for you. And you can specify these, of course. And also, we are going to take the, um, take, uh, we are going to use the targets ecosystem. So we are, we, with this idea, with this design, just when we can um, generate, for example, but just when we write all of these, we can, easily use any Go library available or any C library available or maybe even, I don't know, but maybe even Zig libraries. So yes, um, it's going to have multiple shapes of binary. So that's why it's called Loki. This is the compiler flow. I have some basic ideas about it that I'm going to tell you about. Sorry for the disruption. So my core ideas for Loki are going to be um, everything should be an expression. Um, so if expressions are uh, ifs are also should be expression, they can be statements in a way that you you will not capture the output. But ifs should and will be an expression. So you can basically return an if the value that will uh, be emitted from this if clause. Error handling is going to be like Zig and like Go. We errors are going to be just values. And even I, you know, took an ambitious step and I'm not going to introduce a specific type in the compiler for errors. I hope I can do it. I don't know. It's just an experiment. But I'm going to just, you know, treat errors as a convention in a language and in the standard library. So I'm not going to introduce a new error union or error interface on it or anything. I'm just gonna provide a syntactic sugar for handling errors, two probably, two syntactic sugars. But other than that, errors are just conventions. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you about the, um, the syntactic sugar thing. Compile time code execution is going to be available because, and this is a must, because our types are first class values like Zig. I really like that idea about Zig. So compile time code execution, because actually, as you are seeing with these sample codes I wrote for Loki, you can see that everything is just declarations. Nothing is other than declarations. So everything is an expression, and every expression should be captured. So types are expressions, type data, type metadata, which is which should be a compi compile time known thing. Functions are expressions and um, they, they are basically uh, defined using declarations. So we don't have a special syntax to define the named function. Every function is an expression and um, will be just defined and assigned to a uh, symbol. Types are expressions uh, and basically values. As you see, a struct and interface are also values. They're, so types are basically compile time constants and functions. And interfaces are implicit. They've, first of all, we have interfaces. We are going to mostly use them like Rust does with the traits. So they are going to just you know be um, like annotations for the compiler. But by default, interfaces have, I, I hope we can implement it like this. So interfaces don't have any kind of um, overhead in runtime, at least in C code, in the C backend. In Go backend interfaces are the thing that have, inter have overhead. 
if we use the Go interface type directly. There is the concept of um, platforms or targets. This is not necessarily named platforms. Maybe it's called targets at the, at the, in future. So each target has this set of features that is unique to it, like Go concurrency primitives, Go routines and channels, which we don't have in C, or direct memory uh, management calls like free and malloc, which are, again, um, unique to C. We, I know we have them in Go, but uh, they're not that, you know, surface API. It's hard to call them. And if you want to use a feature that is not available in your target, you're going to get a compiler. And for example, if you, if you just use the Go routine primitive from Go or channel, and you want to compile down for C, it's a compiler. We also have um, this clear way of interop, uh, interop with um, the host language, which for example, in here, we have Go, which we'll, uh, we are importing the Go colon FMT. So this is basically, the syntax is like um, the target name, which is Go, the colon. And from there, it's the import path of that language. So for example, in here, it's FMT. It could be net HTTP or anything else. And in C probably is a path to a header file. And then we can check if the host is Go, we are going to call this. And this is actually important because um, this code, when you, are, when you compile it for Go, is going to remove this if and just you know insert this instruction. Why is that? Because you know we are ha we have the compile time execution. We are getting inspiration from Zig, and with this compile time execution um, feature, we can um, evaluate if expressions and can, if so if an uh, if an if expression if an if condition is constant and com compile time known, we can evaluate the active branch in that if and just insert that and just remove that if, which is a optimization step in the compiler. The build tool is going to not be nothing special. It's going, just going to be a set of, um, you know, um, set of uh, flags and declarations and also fee flags to be to pass uh, to be uh, flags and options to pass to the target code uh, generator compiler. Let's take a look at the spec file. So everything is a declaration. We already seen that. I'm thinking about this mute stuff, this mute thing. Everything is also by default constant and immutable unless you specify it. I don't know the, about the mute keyword. Maybe I changed the syntax. I don't know. But I love this syntax. So name, an optional type argument, uh, type uh, definition, and the expression. Uh, so we have loops. Like Go, we only have one loop, and it has three syntaxes. So for like a C style for loop, we have this um, for each kind of style, and we also have the while syntax. Conditionals are both expressions and um, statements at the same time. So this B, uh, the value that we, we are assigning to B is basically the output of this if expression. The types that are available in this Loki, uh, Loki language, we have integers. Oh, I forgot actually the, the unsigned things. We have the same unsigned. The type names are look most likely most like Go. We have array type. We have slice type, which are reference to some array plus a size. We have map type, hash map type. We have tuples, which are basically at at the bottom, there will be probably, they are probably just structs that compiler will gener generate for you. We are going to have um, optional types, so no nullability by default. And we are going to have this syntax for tuples. I'm still thinking about this. Should, be this, should this be a tuple or a union? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. And type itself is a value, so a type is a type. We have complex data structures, we have structs, we have interfaces, we have unions and enums. And I'm thinking about making these two just one. Uh, 
problem. So basically, um, union, uh, so basically enums with values for each variant, like Rust. The module system is going to be the simplest I can think of. So each import is going to be, so when you say import math, I actually need to edit this. When you say import math, it's either in math.loki file or math slash module.loki file or a struct that is math. So the, the, and, and, and each module, so is, you see each file is a module, each directory is also a module and modules are just special structs basically and, and they're not even that special. They're just structs with some fields. So well, that compiler will generate for you. Um, so these will have the same output. The interoperability, we, we have already seen this. So for example, if we import, and you know, they are inconsistent with the readme, I know, the calls and everything. I just, I'm just experimenting. But we are, when, we are, when we start to write the compiler, we should probably standardize these. So I'm importing HTTP and FMT libraries from Golang. So these imports, since they are from the host language, they are not probably to be um, normal structs. They would probably be structs that have this, you know, um, proxy to a call. Or I don't know. I'm just thinking about how to do the interoperability like this. There's going to be and everything else is simple. This try is also an experimental thing. I don't know. Down down the spec, we are going to see a different syntax for error handling. We have the compile time code execution. We already talked about it. And finally, the error, error handling. So errors are enums, for example, not necessarily. Error can be a struct. Error can be a string. Anything can be an error. And so we have this special syntax for error handling, which is dot bank and they this is basically a shorthand syntax on tuples or unions based um it depends on uh, what i decide for this syntax to generate so this will generate a tuple with two um, types in it or two values in it or a union and based on that it will f get the first value it's either the union or the tuple it gets the first value checks if it's empty or not the default value for that type so if for example it's an enum um is it set or not if it's a string if it's empty or not if it's a optional thing is it null or not the default value and if not it will return the um return the output otherwise it will return the first one so basically check the first one if it's set return it if not, return the other one. So basically, that's the error handling. And yes, so it will ex be expanded to a, either a union or tuple. I have not yet decided. So this is basically um, the introduction to the Loki. And um, I hope we can finish this. I'm really excited about this. And I think it's going to be much ed educational, at least for me. So thanks for watching, and if you want to, um, if you want me to continue uh, creating videos, please like and subscribe. And you can always contact me using comments, Twitter, Gmail, etc., and GitHub itself issues. And that is it. So don't forget to subscribe and comment. And and until the next video, goodbye.